Who is the king of leather on the Air Jordan 1 platform? Is it the shattered backboard or is it the Jordan 1 retro high 85s? And is this leather thicker and better than like most people say it is or is it just more the same from the Jordan line? Well, we're gonna find out by cutting it in half, burning the leather, putting the macro lens on, on the leather to find out the truth about the Jordan 85 leather. And thanks to StockX for sponsoring this video. If you don't know who StockX is, they're a live global marketplace that sells new and authentic products especially the hard to find products. And you may know them for selling sneakers and shoes, but they sell all sorts of stuff. They sell gaming consoles, artwork, trading cards, Legos, art, merch, sunglasses, crowbar, Supreme stuff, fear of God, pretty much anything you can think of that's hard to get, StockX has, has it. And that's why we use StockX for a good chunk of the different random hype sneakers that we buy because they're so hard to find. And StockX even has those really hard to find promotional items or regional items where you can't buy them in the US but they're sold off overseas or whatever. You can still buy them on StockX because someone has bought them and put them on StockX. So it's, it's nice for that kind of stuff as well. And they carry a lot of items that are below retail. All you have to do is use that below retail filter and it filters everything else. So you can even end, end up getting brand new stuff for cheaper than it sold, which is really nice, especially if you're cutting them in half. And one really useful thing that only StockX does is they have their StockX tools that have the pricing data, editorial inspo, personalization, and all these different tools that show you exactly how much like a sneakers cost over time and how it's trending and if it's on its way down, if it's on its way up. It's interesting to see, but it, it's really important for us when we're making these videos to be able to see how these sneakers have, have evolved and changed over time according to their price. And every item stock X sells is guaranteed brand new. So you're not just like buying someone's old nasty sneakers. They're brand new. The Legos are brand new. They're not sticky. They're not covered in child slobber or child boogers. Everything's brand new. So check out StockX via link below. And thanks again to StockX for sponsoring this video. So the history of the Jordan 1 is pretty well known. So we'll just do the shortened and condensed version. But it was designed by Peter Moore, the same designer of Dunks in the early 80s. And then in 1984, Michael Jordan signed with Nike and Michael originally preferred the Converse Chuck Taylors and Adidas basketball shoes to play in. But in late 1984, he played in the Air Jordan 1s for the first time. And then in 1985, they released the shoe to the public in the bread colorway and, and the colorway that basically this this colorway but Nike ordered way too many Jordans so they kind of just sat on the shelves for years getting surpassed by the newer iterations of the Jordan line and they just kind of slowly faded away until 1995 when they brought it back but it also kind of flopped but then in 2001 they tried it again and this time it actually landed a little bit and it's kind of gained in popularity ever since coming out with tons of different colorways and different iterations, different leather qualities, and they've slowly shifted and changed the design little teeny bits by bit to make the shoe a little bit cheaper and because of new manufacturing techniques, the, sh the shoe just slowly changed from what it was originally. Starting from a performance shoe and ending up more as a stylish shoe. And so in 2020, they released the Jordan 1 85, which was made to be more like the actual original and less like the style version of the Jordan 1s. So that's kind of how we ended up with this, but what features are actually different on this shoe compared to the regular Jordans that make it more similar to the 1985 version? So the cup soles are slightly different, different heights and different shape, very slightly. The upper is also very, very slightly changed. The toe shape is slightly different. The lining is a different material. Allegedly it has thicker leather, more like the original, and they came with a different lasting material. If you look inside of here, you can see it's a fiberboard. And one little thing that I didn't actually notice until I watched wear testers review these shoes, is it comes with this little card that explains what's on the inside of the shoe and explains what each panel and what the design process was behind the shoe. And I love this. And I wish every single sneaker came with this, the full breakdown of what their idea was, how they executed it. And obviously it put me out of business a little bit, but I think it's really cool. Cause if you look at here, like the padded collar has the reason behind it, the ankle stabilizer, like all these, they're not just for design. Well, they are, but like also it, it, this is from an era where if they needed support somewhere, they just put a panel of leather rather than like a piece of plastic. So a really cool little bonus that came in these shoes that I wish would come with every other shoe. But now let's see if this shoe actually is what it claims to be. Let's start with the leather first. And the problem is with, with judging leathers, there's, they're not really a grading system. You know, the tanneries have a different grading system where they, they grade hides based on the amount of flaws are in the hide for the total hide. There's also, you know, a different cross section, but there's not like an actual grading system. So I wanted to come up with a little bit of a rose anvil 
standardized grading system. And so it's probably gonna change over time and um, I could use your input on how to, to refine it and get it really how it needs to be. We're not gonna grade the leather on thickness or durability. It'll be graded off of basically three things and it'll be graded from A, B, C, and D, maybe a S category for really special leathers, but it's gonna be graded off of the what part of the cross section it comes from, the, the top coat and the finish on the leather. So starting at the worst and working our way up, to be a D grade, it has to be cut from the cheaper split portion of the hide that doesn't have that, that grain pattern that people associate with a smooth uh, aspect of leather with. And for the top coat, a D grade leather is gonna have a, a heavy polyurethane coating on top. And for the finish, it's gonna have a fake uh, leather print in to on top of it. To be a C grade leather, slightly better than D, like regular Nike leather, it's gonna have a small remnants of the hide in the cross section. The top coat is also gonna be a heavy polyurethane coating, and the finish is also gonna have a fake leather print on it. To be a B grade leather, this is more like what we saw in the Mischief Super Normals, where it has the grain in it, or at least some of the grain, and instead of a plastic polyurethane coating on top, it's just a heavy pigmented coating. And to be a B grade, it's, it can have a fake print in it, or it can just be the natural top of the leather. And then to be considered an A grade, this is more of what you see like the Italian sneakers, the really high-end things where it's a full grain leather, no polyurethane at all on the top coat, just a little bit of pigment and dye, and no fake print embossed into the top. And the reason most sneakers don't have that A grade leather is because to have no coating on top, to have no pigment on top, it shows every single little flaw and so it's a lot harder to make shoes from that and so that's why a lot of time Nike uses this really heavy coating is because they can hide all the flaws and they can make it look even and consistent and I think it also reflects in quality and how the leather ages and how it's going to crease and fold and and also the durability because of how much more grain an A grade is going to have compared to a D grade and then obviously the S, S class the S grade don't really know yet we it's just kind of a, a hypothetical class for a perfect leather out there. So that's the grading system, but how does this 85 Jordan actually rank on that system? Well, if you look at the cross section of this leather on the macro lens, you can see there is just a little bit of the grain in there. And if we slice off a top layer of that coating on top, we can see that there, there is that tight grain pattern as well. So we know it lies within somewhere in that higher quality cross section. Then if you put the flame to this leather, it does start to curl, it starts to smoke, it starts to melt. So we know it is a heavy polyurethane coating on top. And if we look closer again at the actual finish on top, the print on top, you can see it's a fake leather print. Those aren't actual real pores. So this to me would rank pretty clearly in the C grade leather. And people keep talking about the thickness of this leather. So let's see how thick it actually is. So let's pop a couple of these stitches off of the upper so we can get a caliper in there. And then if we measure the leather, it comes in at 1.6 millimeters thick. And to put that in perspective to see how thick it actually is, we compared it to the other Nike leathers we have. So the Monarchs are 1.4 millimeter, the Air Jordan 1s are 1.4 millimeter, the Dunks are 1.4 millimeter, and the Air Force 1s are 1.6 millimeter. So slightly thicker than most leather, but the exact same thickness as the Air Force 1s. If you look really closely at the two leathers, they're almost identical. So I kind of think that this is the exact same leather that they make the Air Force 1s out of because it's not that much thicker and it, it looks the exact same. But one thing that is slightly better than most of the shoes we have from Nike is this swoosh. If I cut this swoosh off, it's basically just a, a reversed nubuck because that nubuck texture where it's been sanded and made fuzzy is flipped to the inside and then the, the more fuzzy suede side is out. So to me, the suede is actually a higher quality leather than the white leather. And I'll probably make a ranking system for suedes as well so we can kind of have a different ranking for each type of leather. But we'll, we'll do that in maybe the next video that we do suede just to keep it not the most confusing thing ever. But how does the shattered backboards compare? Like where does this rank on our new ranking system? So if we look at the cross section, you can see there is some grain in there. And if we burn it, you can see there's no pigment that's curling up and, and melting. It's, it's just a top layer of um, almost like paint instead of plastic. And if we put the macro lens on it, you can see there's no fake print embossed into it. It's just the natural pores. It's the natural way the leather looks. So to me, the majority of these panels on the shattered backboards are an A-grade leather, which is a lot more what I expected from the 85s when, when I was reviewing them before we actually got them in hand because people were saying it's a, a better leather. But the black leather on the shoe is just like the 85s leather. This is more of a C-grade leather because it's got the polyurethane coating on top. It does have the grain and it has the fake leather print in it. Comparing the shattered backboards with the 85s, it's really not much of a competition because this is a couple tiers above in leather quality where this is still pretty much standard C-grade Nike leather. It's basically the same quality as all the other 
ones we measured, just a little bit thicker and closer to the Air Force ones. So unfortunately, nothing really special about the leather of this shoe. It's just standard Nike leather, nothing special at all. But there is something special on the inside of the shoe and how it's built, so let's cut this thing in half. So halfway through cutting, we realized that we forgot to do the PSI test. And so before we put on the bandsaw, we grabbed our super scientific basketball pressure gauge and with a sharpened needle on it and pierced it through the outsole and registered at 11.5 PSI. So at least this air unit is pressurized and it's a real functional piece of tech. So now let's see what's inside. So almost identical to the regular Jordan 1s in every way, except for one big thing, and that is the lasting board on this. So a regular Jordan 1, and basically like the shattered backboards, these mids, and all the other ones we've seen, are a strobel stitch construction with a really thin uh, lasting material underneath with foam on top. But the 85s are a lot sturdier build and a lot more like the traditional Air Jordans, I'm assuming, where it's board lasted where you've got this a little bit thicker and a little bit more rigid cellulose lasting board on the inside where the upper is tucked underneath and then glued without really a strobel stitch on the inside. It makes it a more rigid construction, it's more supportive, and it's a longer lasting construction. So even though the leather's nothing special, at least the insides are changed and, and somewhat reminiscent of the original Jordans. It's still not the thickest and most, most supportive lasting board. It's, you know, it's it's pretty flimsy still, but is it actually worth the extra money to get this? Is it, are you gonna actually feel a difference? Well, not really anything special with the leather because it's just the Air Force One leather, but you do get this style of construction that's slightly different. It's gonna feel a little bit different under, under your foot. So let me know what you guys think and if you have a pair of these, if you can feel a difference between the 85s and the regular Jordan 1s. And so far, the shattered backboards still remain the king of leather for the Jordan 1 platform. And this is the start of Jordan July, where we're gonna cut apart a pair of Jordans every single Saturday. So also let me know which Jordans you want us to cut apart and dissect and test to really find out the truth of what you're spending your hard-earned money on, especially when it comes to these hype sneakers. Uh, because as, you, as you've seen, sometimes they are said to have better leather, when in all reality, it's just standard Nike leather. So thank you guys, see ya.